ToyTractorTimes.com is at the 2013 Lafayette Farm Toy Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're visiting with Chris Steve, who has won the display contest uh, for the 2013 show. Congratulations, Chris. Um, can you give us a little tour of your display and tell us about its name? Sure. Its name is Where Corn Don't Grow. A uh, good friend of mine has a beautiful display that happens to have a lot of real agriculture on it. Didn't know that there was some ranch land that happens to be west of him. So I thought I'd build a display to kind of show that off. Um, we do have a little chunk of a field going on here with a uh, gorgeous one-way disker that a guy by the, one of the members by the name of Putsy up in Canada made for me. Uh, hooked to a Massey 1800 because if it's Massey, you know it's got to be in my collection. Um, we're running over here on the fence row. We even got an armadillo and such, just like we'd have in Oklahoma or out in Kansas. Um, let me take a look at these uh, the one way again because that's a that's a really detailed piece and yeah I love how that turned out he actually made it so that the discers will even actually go up and down and the wheels do dolly the way they're supposed to as the thing would turn around corners wow um, we got it he's actually getting ready to pull up to what I call Grandpa's old Chevy to put some fuel into her. Um, now this uh, this soil is very red looking and uh, you actually had this brought in from Oklahoma. Yeah, Caleb Stone shipped me 15 pounds of good Oklahoma sand to make it so it was authentic. We tried looking for sand that would match from uh, Woodland Scenic and such like that and there's just nothing like good Oklahoma red dirt to give it that good color. That's a, I think a 72 Chevy that I had a railroad guy weather up for us. I think it turned out real nice. Um, he's actually got rust and everything on it. She's got the 50, you know, the guy was too cheap to get himself a real L tank, so he put a 55 gallon barrel with a hand crank on the back of it so that he could uh, move his fuel across. Come around this way, and my cattle were provided by Russ Pryor. Um, he did me up a baby bull that's telling dad that it's time for him to move on, that he's now got the herd taken care of. <laughs> Looks like he's got a little way to go, yeah. He's got a little way to go, but I think he's ornery enough to make it happen. Um, we no. got gate has got a lot of detail in it. And yeah, that's a cattle gate like you see in Oklahoma, Kansas, and even all the way up into Montana and such. Um, about the only thing they do catch is a human. They do a pretty good job keeping them in, but I've known cows that they get rowdy enough. They've jumped over them. Um, we've got our oil field sign, which is required by law for um, to tell you the emergency contact and such like that on who the rig belongs to. We've got our Cattlemen's Association sign. Like I say, we even got the tire on there to tell Eric Pearson to stay on the right side of the fence. Now what were the two cattlemen's associations on here? Uh, we have the Oklahoma Cattlemen's Association and then uh, Texas West Southern, which is a lot of the guys in Oklahoma and Kansas are members of as well. Um, we're running polled Herefords on here. Um, in one of their other pastures, they do run some F1s and some black baldies. Um, what do you use to make the fence? The fence is actually just simply, I was at Hobby Lobby and found some uh, silver string they use for making wedding dresses. Um, and it's strung on there real nice and then they're just into, um, just into uh, basswood posts that Jason Kreiser told me how to uh, weather up so they look pretty aged. Uh, I think it turned out real nice and it was pretty simple to do. It um, takes real good pictures of nice silver in the background. It kind of looks like it could be barbed wire. Sure does. Now we, you're talking about the oil. Yeah, we got a pump jack out here. It, you know, is they're all over Oklahoma and Kansas and such like that. This one would be more from, and the display itself is kind of from the 70s. Uh, law now requires that they put fence around them so that the cattle don't get hurt. But um, yeah, they're commonly just seen in pastures. And actually, the oil field company would have been the one that put the nice road in, and that's why it stops and turns into what the guys affectionately out west call cowboy cruise control, the ruts. Um, those are, that's some really detailed, I mean, how do you make that? Because it, it looks like, you know, over here we almost have some mud where the footprints are around the water and trough. And yeah, the, the mud itself is actually, I just mixed Woodland Scenic Smooth It with their realistic water and then um, took one of Ertl's cows and stomped the footprints into it and let it dry that way. The cracks and stuff kind of came in natural. That actually, um, Doug Peterson's the one who came up with the idea for me to turn and make mud like that. The ruts I've done on a couple other displays of mine, where they were supposed to specifically tractor ones, what I actually do is just take a Hot Wheels that are, truck that I really don't like to, you know, keep around and such like that, and dip the wheels in water and just keep running it through uh, drywall uh, mud. And I think it turns out all right. Yeah, it looks very realistic. You got your corral over here. Yeah, got the little working corral. Um, 
Got a couple different gates on it. One was made by my good friend Chris Delva, and then one by Dan Meyer of Dan's Farm Toys. And I made the silver one in the center. Caleb made the beautiful head gate at this end. Um, the feeder is actually by Caleb Stone as well. Um, the windmill is one of uh, Tractor Fab's kits put together. That's a real nice thing when they get done. They're a little tedious to play with, but they turn out sweet. That's got the pump and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, the only thing that's got the, the only thing I've added to that from his kit is just the uh, water chute putting it right into the stock tank. Something a little different that I do on my cows that you don't see on all of them is I actually go to the bother putting ear tags on them and, um, and then you actually I don't know if you can't make it out on this one but I put little branding marks on them as well. It was something I hadn't seen done and it's common you know it, you have to do it. Every detail counts. Yep. And then uh, just kind of like the landscape here. And... Yeah, that was one thing that I really wanted to take on a little bit more is most of the land I have seen is, you know, a lot of guys, they do a nice rolling to it, but Oklahoma terrain is so goofy from the fact that we get droughts and then we get real water and such like that. that it, um, well, it's kind of flat but rough. Right, can, yeah. That's a... Now this uh, is a cake truck over here. It looks like the yeah. Well, it's cows a ranch, are... yeah, ranch truck that they're following the cake. Uh, cake's like a giant rabbit pellet um, that you feed on top of your hay. And commonly, when you're coming out of the pasture, even if you already unloaded and left them piled somewhere, you'll have a half dozen of them or so following behind, thinking that there's more goodies to come out of it. Now, uh, I guess we'll come over and take a look at it from this side. Your, how big is this display? This is actually roughly 30 by 36 inches. It's actually designed perfectly to fit into the trunk of my wife's Passat so we can bring it down. <laughs> and I think that's something we're seeing more of is that definitely the big displays are nice but it's portable and um, it, it's know. portable and you can put a lot more detail into a small area and what what I like to think of them as is just like a picture in time you know it just a quick shot of what you saw as you were driving down the road and um, well, it sure looks good. Uh, I guess we'll come back around here to the front and uh, take a look at the trophy. This is the first place trophy for the 2013 show. It's got the Toy Tractor Times uh, versatile custom 1150 yeah. with the chrome stacks. Yeah, that's a real nice piece. And then uh, Jeff Moore, he uh, from Moore's Farm Toys, built the ripper and the, the nice uh, plaque. Of, So we definitely yeah, I was appreciate really happy to get that. Real shock. That's a nice piece. Well, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you come up with next. All right, thank you.